Towers in Countryside, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers in West Bay. And by the Ministry of District Administration. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. And Cayman Airways. Call them on 949-2311 to book your nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados. And Digicel. Cayman's bigger, better network. And Doctor's Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctor's Hospital. Always there for you. Call 949-6066. But I do have some questions. There are more questions than answers. Cayman Islands. For most listeners' participation programs. Talk today. What is on your mind, Cayman? If you are ready to talk, we are ready to listen. Here's, Here's your, your host, host Sterling, Sterling Dwayne, Dwayne Ebanks. Ebanks. You're welcome. And thank you very much for joining us as we get into the mood of Easter and be thankful for you know, the promise of salvation as offered by our Easter celebrations. I'm glad that we have the company of Mr. Michael Miles to continue the discussion and maybe we can get into something meaningful and constructive. So please stay tuned for Talk Today. Avoid any statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use indecent language or make any statement that is false or misleading. Call 1-800-534-8255-949-6990-949-8037 or WhatsApp us on 925-3261. Email talk today at candw.ky. Let your voice be heard. And now, back to Sterling Dwayne Ebanks, Radio K-Man Talk Today. Hey, welcome back, and thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll be able to invite you to participate in what may be, as I've been taking to saying recently, not just sobering, but sometimes somber, and as serious as it is, what society needs to appreciate, we will not get in the way, yeah, unless we are. As I say, Michael, very yeah. positive and prayerful uh, with a purposeful approach. Welcome, yeah. on. Thanks for coming, Mike. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, you know, it's always uh, phenomenal to be on your show and, and to, you know, discuss with the listening public, you know, some yeah. of the things that are near and dear to our heart. So it's always great, you know, um, to have this invite. So thank you for having me on. You're most welcome. And thank you, too, for accepting it. And I'm hoping that our discussion will not just bring to attention uh, important details that many of us know, but perhaps we have uh, been either deliberate or just so consumed with other things that we've been distracted and mm -hmm. been unable to genuinely get into a meaningful discourse. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, we don't want to hear about this thing. We don't want to talk about it because maybe if we don't, it'll go away. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we we can pretend, okay. you know, and that pretend is going to cost us a billion dollars. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I and, 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 and I think that that's what it is now. You know, I mean, when, when we look back at over the years, what we could have done different with, mm -hmm. let's say, a topic like the, the waste management system that we have going on here. We had dealt with that 40 years ago. It would be costing us, you know, a lot of money today. But yet we waited, we delayed, we made decisions, we did consulting reports and we did some of everything. You know, I, yeah. I compare it to what we're doing today with things like crime or the prevention of crime or, or the intervention of crime or criminal behavior. And there's so many things that we could have done different. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been a major part of the push for how we can actually get better. Are we going to ever eradicate it? No. But now we're planning on building a bigger prison, you know, or building a new prison that's going to cost us $150 million, right? But when we look at that, why can't we take a third of that money and put towards young people who potentially could get in crime and deter them from that? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I'm looking at things. And this is what other countries are now looking at. People are now understanding that they can't buy their way out of, you know, out of, crime or the the uh the after impacts of crime we're never going to do that so if mm -hmm. we think that just building another prison is going to help us with that or put more police officers on the 
on the street is going to help us with that. You can't put, you know, like you'd have to employ 80,000 police officers. So you're not going to, you know, like you're not going to do this with just putting more police cars or more police officers out there. It, mm. it has to be a different strategy. A societal approach, a, a paradigm shift in what we're doing. It has to be a community approach. Okay. Um, it, 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 it must be that in every jurisdiction that I have been in and from the Cayman Islands government to, uh, you, you know, to um, when I was with the Keys Foundation, I've f- been flown around the world to look a lot of really simple projects, programs, processes, uh, laws, you name it. I, like I've been exposed to it. You know, they've given me a hell of an education of what other jurisdictions are doing. And every time that we discuss it here, no one wants to move it forward. Okay. You know. I want to ask you, I mean, a couple of things. And, and I'm hoping that as we listen, that we listen with a genuine intent to try to understand that if we have to respond, we can do so with, yeah. you know, a sense of positive and hopeful expectation, but from an informed perspective. I'm mindful that we are argumentative. We might like confrontation, but boy, we step on somebody's corns and all of a sudden now they yeah, won't I get mean, up in your face, right? I mean, w- w- where I am um, doing is that mm. I can agree to disagree with folks, right? Mm-hmm. People don't have to agree with everything that I say. Um, I am backed by research, and people don't have to agree with it, but research is research, right? And, and facts are facts. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to say things that I don't believe that's going to be in the Cayman Islands' best interest or our people's best interest. I've never done anything to to even you know expose that I am that I have some ulterior motive other than to serve the people of the Cayman Islands. I like that for me it's a blood oath. Like I don't know what is it for anyone else, but for me it's a blood oath. I'm Caymanian to the absolute bone, and everything that I have done have been to the advancement of Caymanians. Even the company that I formed has been to the advancement of Caymans. I have skin in the game. I've put everything that I own in what I do, and I do it seven days a week. And, you know, any young person that have walked into our organization or even my team, you you can speak to any one of them without me being in Rome, and they'll tell you that I am on almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week, almost, at, you know, to their disposal. So I come, you know, not with, you know, having an argument of about what is right or what is wrong. I come and say, how can we do this different? Because right. what we're doing right now isn't working. It's costing us millions of dollars, right? Building a new prison isn't going to help the situation. Yeah. Get putting more police officers, putting more guns in the street, giving more, you know, uh, uh, access for civilians to carry weapons isn't going to be the answer. Look at what's happening in the U.S. Is it, I mean, you you're, you're now having more and more shootings. So, you know, and. and is it that, I mean, is that the answer? It's not the answer. We're a small jurisdiction, you know, arming more people isn't going to help us and certainly locking up most of our people. Let's look at statistically. We're not locking up more foreigners, right? It's not more foreigners, it's at Northward. Going to Northward, <laughs> 70% of those people in there are our people, our young people. It's interesting, right? Because even with that, but the $150 million prison, to your understanding, we are talking about that. If it was able to come to fruition, when, how soon would a government want to expend that sort of money? Tomorrow, the next budget cycle? I mean, I'm sure that they'll spread that out. I mean, based on what I was, what what I looked at in the budget and mm. and what I've read in the media, you know, they're going to spread it out. You know, between this year, next year, and I'm sure when the next government gets mm-hmm. in. What I don't find, you know, let me just say this. Mm-hmm. We have people champion things like that. We will champion a new prison. But what I've never seen over the last 25 years are actually a minister saying, I am going to champion prevention programs for (laughs) young people. Mm -hmm. I've never had a minister other than, and and let me take that back to a certain extent. Frank McField probably has been the only one that I have dealt with that have said, I want to ensure that young people do not end up in crime. He's done the research. He put the programs in. When he brought me back in 2002, it was simpler that. How do we not need a Bonaventure home or a Francis Borden or a this or that? How, how do we not need an Eagle House? Mm-hmm. You know, he wanted to look at what sort of preventative programming or laws or processes that we needed to put in place. And when I had conversations with him, it was all about that. 
-hmm. The next person to him that I worked with was Ralston Anglin. Mm -hmm. It was all about what else can we do to ensure that our young people don't end up down a pathway that is regrettable or or, or it's going to cost our country a lot of money and supported a lot of the initiatives. Beyond them, there's not been another minister current or past beyond them that have said, I am going to champion this. Yeah, what well, about Mr. Mike Adam? Mike didn't really do a lot per se, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm sure w- the the things of what I think Mike did was he was trying to streamline social services. It wasn't so much about youth development. Frank did youth development. Mm-hmm. He was passionate about how do we stop Cameron from going to the prison system, Yeah. right? How do we stop the railroad from... John Gray or Clifton Hunter or Syfic of our kids going there. Yeah. How do we ensure that young people have a better understanding that they are going to be the futures of our country? I don't have that in leadership today. No okay. one champions that. We have people that champion, you know, tourism, the roads. We have people that champion finance. You know, you know, when you look at a lot of the folks that are um, that have been elected, they're championing those things. We've never had an we, we've. We don't have within this government or the past government someone that really champions youth development mm-hmm. to, to say, I'm going to ensure that youth prevention programs are established and we're going to fund them at 100%. Right. What we have is NPOs trying to do a thing. You know, last night I was privileged to be invited to the Jubilate program. When, um, when, I, was in, when I was in the Ministry of Education, you, the, that organization came to me because they couldn't get into the school system. This is one of the most phenomenal programs that I have ever seen. You're yep. teaching p- young people as young as six, seven years old how to play an instrument, and yet they couldn't actually get into the school system. Did you understand why? A lot of it was, one was politics, <laughs> but also bureaucracy, yep. right? So we were blocking that. So I gave them a pathway. Now... They have gone through hundreds of young people that have taught instruments yeah. to that 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 you know that have found a love for music, and I was privileged to see that unfold again last That's night. Nice. At Harcourt, huh? Yeah, I want to talk to you about all these things, and I want to see if if maybe we'll hear your voice. We certainly can hear your heart, mm-hmm. and let's ask what we can do. A few things you shared and the came on into the core. Uh, you alluded to you know almost uh, as well. We see in other jurisdictions, the U.S. in particular, you know, prison for profit. Another hundred fifty million dollar prison, coupled with two billion for the dump, as yeah. MP Saunders referenced. Yeah. Another five hundred million for the port. Who knows how yeah. much, right? Yeah. At what point is this financially sustainable, and how does it benefit our society? But let's talk about some of those prevention and other things. Michael Myers sits with us. Uh, I think you'll give us a lot to talk about as sure. we go into the weekend. Please stay tuned for talk today. Find your dream car with a Cayman National Vehicle Loan. Enjoy 100% financing, up to eight-year repayment, and a 7% fixed interest rate for the first five years. For eco-friendly cars, we'll waive your commitment fee. This only applies to new vehicles. Call 949-8300 or email lending at caymannational.com today. From boat days to beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with With optional optional cookie cookie platters platters for for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one One cookie cookie and and one one bag bag of chips. chips. For all occasions and celebrations, let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. <coughs> you don't sound too good there, Bobo. Yeah, you know how it is. With the kids back in school, <coughs> every other week they come in now with something and then I catch it. <coughs> sound like it catch you. But for real, brother, flu season is here and COVID is still around. You got to stock about things like medicine, vitamins, and minerals for you and the kids. You know what they say, prevention is better than cure. 
At ValuMed, our pharmacists can help manage flu symptoms and provide guidance on vitamins and minerals to best support you and your family's overall health. Visit ValuMed Pharmacy on Walker's Road or Bodentown, or WhatsApp your questions and prescription refills to ValuMed on Walker's Road at 926-1662, or WhatsApp ValuMed in Bodentown at 916-5511. Live happy, live healthy with ValuMed Pharmacy. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I go in flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. Has the circus come to town? No, it's A.L. Thompson's two-week blowout sale. From March 15 through March 30, get under the huge tent outside A.L. Thompson's to save big. Save up to 75% on lighting, electrical, plumbing, paint, and hardware. Save up to 75% on housewares, building materials, and the ever-popular scratch and dent appliances. Take advantage of the savings while they last. It's March blowout under the tent at Ale Thompson's Georgetown. You know what I love to do with my family? Go fishing. I can put the bait on and cast and reel the line all by myself. My mommy and daddy say when they were little, there were plenty more fish to catch, but now there are lots more people fishing, so it's harder to find them. That's why we have marine parks now. They set some areas aside so the fish there can have babies and grow bigger. Then they swim out to other areas where I can catch them. Having the marine parks means there will still be fish there when I'm grown up and fishing with a family of my own. For more info, download the Cayman DOE app or visit doe.ky. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back. And thanks for joining us. And thanks, too, to Mr. Michael Miles for sitting with us. Michael, these discussions about society and about the impact of youth and programming and, and as you said, you know, the policies and procedures that you've seen in other jurisdictions, I want to ask you about that. I also want to ask about our approach to imprisonment and the like and with that in mind increasingly I do not take that what was said that was intended to be malicious or maligning or nope. in a way right yes. not 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 nope. from you specifically but right. just in general and many in this in the community and this this is only you know the end of the first quarter of this year and thus far just in casual conversations with a number of people they started to question a few things one is the allegation that some who are in prison, they were either, uh, had either entered the country illegally for some reason, whether drug smuggling or what have you, apprehended, charged, and convicted, and then sentenced. But they are now be able to come out, you know, during that sentence to do things. And they say, well, how is that? Why are we spending money? And I should have to say that from young students yeah. to some of our elders are saying, but that can't be right. You must be wrong. Right to the person who's saying it, um, but also you know, foreign nationals who were here and committed some offense in prison, and then as part of their sentence, they get to come out on the work release or the like, questioning what well, you know. Does that make sense? I have ventured an answer. Could I ask you the first I mean, one? Uh, you know wh what I've seen um, when it comes to a number of foreign nationals that have come out. A lot of what foreign nationals have committed have been 
labeled or, or deemed white collar crimes. Okay. Right. Um, I, I don't know. What, I, I I can't comment on the on 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 the process of when they're released. Right. You know because I but, know. But but sorry, sorry. I may have misled or, or confused you. Yeah. In, in the first instance, right. An individual who comes into the jurisdiction illegally. Right. Uh, maybe in the process of smuggling drugs or the like, is through the diligence of a border control and the police in operation, you know, they apprehended and then they end up being sentenced. Right. Uh, many have said, should that person, so I'll ask you, to your mind, should that person then be able to, while they're serving the sentence, come out on a work release program for whatever period of time now and then get back into the prison? I don't agree with it. Um, okay. I personally don't agree with it. I think they need to serve their time uh -huh. and I think they need to be deported. Mm. Um, that's where, and, and most jurisdictions have that. They serve their time and then they are removed from the island and they are never to come back. Right. Um, I don't think that they should be coming out on any form of work release or any sort of interaction with the with the yeah. community. Yeah. Uh, with Caymanians, it's very different. I think that that needs to happen to ensure that those yeah. folks have some level of introduction back into the community before they are eventually released. Right. I think that's where we're failing Fail people. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we are not doing that well. I think yeah. within the prison, and I've seen it only because I have done... I've established programs within the prison and right. I've worked with some of those guys. What we're not doing is following that through. So we do a great job from, you know, the work release program. So the moment that those guys are released, they're on their own. Right. Right. They don't know where they're going to live. They don't know where they're going to work. They don't know how they're going to survive. So what do they do? It's a revolving They go tour. back to they where they, to that's where the recidivism thing. rate. Correct. Yeah. Right. And I appreciate and that's you. what I have seen. Yeah. I appreciate you letting me ask and certainly you're sharing your opinion yeah. because when I listen to these individuals, many of whom I said are older than I am, but some of these are, are students right. who are going to be pursuing uh, the social sciences and they're, they've they made this comment. And I, and I thought, interesting, and um, the perception being that if you are, uh, an individual in prison because right. you came here illegally as you shared wait a minute you're not allowed on any kind of work release but I've also been told and I only want to ask you knowing the programming you're doing right. knowing your past experience your education and the like just so that I can have an understanding before right. I go and say well Michael has this opinion I have this opinion right. these others have this opinion it is apparent from some people that the perception uh, that they have is a person who goes to prison, mm -hmm. who is not from here, who came here illegally, automatically, upon the sentence being served, they're deported. Apparently, that's not the case, unless there's an order from the court for the deportation. And I'm not going to say that we're going to solve it, but I wanted to take this opportunity, seemingly that just in the last week since you've been on, right. many people have shared that, and for some, it was a shocking revelation. Don't know if that's it's it, yeah. for me. It, that, it's surprising for me as well because, in my experience, uh -huh. what and and it's only my experience with the prison and and dealing with the prison uh -huh. on on work release programs and training programs. You know, my the, the process that I was made to understand is that when an expat finishes their particular stint in the prison system, they are removed from the island right. and um, sent back to their own jurisdiction. Right. That's what I was told. This is surprising to me. Yeah. Um, well, again, it's a perception that I think many of us share. I, yeah. I shared it only to be told that unless there's a court order, it doesn't happen. Yeah. We know that the Honorable Deputy Governor, Mr. Manderson, had said here, and he's just said recently as well. Mm -hmm. um, first here he said that they've been inundated. They've been flooded, constantly bombarded by many people who were removed from the jurisdiction, declared persona non grata, mm -hmm. only to be constantly calling and checking his office and want to get back in, right? Now, how they respond and what they do, I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's something that we need to deal with. But he's also talked about margins of convenience for people in a sense. Um, I want to say that that maybe as a society we're looking at that and asking where is our leadership, where is our effectiveness, where are our policies to speak to these things where, listen, this is what you've done, this is the consequence, just a good parenting. I agree. You know, and is that back to what you shared in relation to leadership or lack of leadership or accountability i'm not so much you know to be honest with you i'm no i'm i'm not so much worried mm -hmm. about the expat community no no no, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah i and 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 i'm not um it concerns me that we can release an individual uh, back into our population that have committed a crime and release that individual back into our back into our population as opposed to removing that person from our jurisdiction 
because I guarantee you if a, if a Caymanian is serving time in the U.S., the moment that that Caymanian is released, that Caymanian is deported, mm -hmm. right? Um, that That's just facts. Um, right. So it's surprising that we won't be doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Why would we also want to track those individuals? Um, you know, we all of our resources should be going towards how do we ensure that our people are successful, not yeah. not folks who've committed crimes in the expat community. Okay. I'm real, yeah, and I, I appreciate that. And that after this break, I want to ask you about <clears throat> maybe that, that failure on our part, as you were talking about, that individual who's in prison, how do we help them with their rehabilitation and their reintegration into society? Um, one caller, he shared, the best trade school is northward in the sense that we have so many skilled tradesmen in that prison. Yeah. What, why are they there? And what happens when they are released? Just to what you share. So can we talk to me about that it's and some of the other issues? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, maybe, maybe I should do this after the break. I know you're yeah. a humble man, but let people know, you know Michael Myers, the your expertise. So after the break, can you tell us yeah, about it? Sure. Because to borrow from Mr. Jeff Schofield, we just didn't find him in the parking lot. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned for talk today. Yeah. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I'm going flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com. Discover your dream home with Cayman Nationals Home Loan. Get up to 95% financing, repayment up to 40 years, and just a 0.5% commitment fee. Your interest rate? Depending on your risk factors, it'll be fixed or variable. Plus, you get a pre-approved credit card. This is a limited time offer. Dial 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. The transition to liquid natural gas will play a critical role in CUC's strategy as it transitions a significant reliance on solar energy. Want to learn more? Visit www.cuc-cayman.com for more information. In life, the more you have, the more you have to lose. The more you love, the more you worry. The more people rely on you, the more you have on your mind. I have peace of mind. Knowing that whoever I care about is protected by the very best. With Sagicor Life of the Cayman Islands, you'll have critical illness coverage and life insurance to help you protect what matters most. Call 949-8211 for more information. Radio Cayman's Talk Today.
What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back. And we're speaking to Mr. Michael Myers, and I had asked him prior to the break if you would, uh, as much as you want, as, uh, share with us, you know, your expertise, because you are f- not just from previous employment with mm-hmm. government, uh, quite a skill set, but experience in what we're talking about. Maybe so people can say, well, as Mr. Jeff would say, you know, he wasn't just in the parking lot. We just didn't find him there. Yeah. All right. I mean, I have. I mean, I have a bachelor's degree in social work, and and I also have thirty five years in working with uh, youth and vulnerable families. I, I have multiple other certifications that I've gotten um, over the last thirty years of working within the mm-hmm. sort of social work or or uh, at least juvenile. Um, I guess um, juvenile either offending and juvenile uh, prevention programs. Right. Um, I've traveled all over the world. Um, some of it, be, some of it, you know, with from the representing the Cayman Islands government um, to look at programming. Um, I've implemented I don't know maybe thirty odd programs in Cayman. Um, I run several charities um, and at least two businesses that deal with rehabilitation, uh, prevention, and job placement, yeah. and job training. Um, the goal for me in in my career and certainly the rest of my life, my mission is to ensure that every Caymanian yeah. has employment or has access to training at either a reasonable cost or a cost that I can afford to help them with. Right. I uh, the, the another goal for us is to ensure that every Caymanian also have access to ongoing training because we can get them in the door of employment, but then they're stuck because their wages don't go up because they don't have any more opportunities to get mm-hmm. um, further qualifications. So we are also there to provide them with additional right. um, training and certifications as well. So that's what we've been doing, um, you know, in the last five years um, of me having Inspire and pushing that model. Um, we've gone beyond that. We we do um, from you know to assist uh, folks that's within our training program with things like childcare to housing to you know things just to attend the program, things like food or transportation. Uh, um, you know, we also assist with things like healthcare, uh, mental health care. You know, I've hired a th- full-time therapist because I believe that our organization have to be holistic rather than focus just on training. Mm-hmm. If an individual is hungry or um, don't have the correct clothing, we simply cannot say that that person isn't ready. We need to help them with that. If we want to teach a man how to fish, then we certainly have to give them the resources. Right. And that's what we are consistently saying. We, you know, It's better to teach a man how to fish, but then they don't have the fishing the line, so well, how do they fish? How do they bait the hook? How do they even per- put precisely. the hook on the line? Michael, you talked about other jurisdictions. Uh, you can either reference them specifically, mm-hmm. but I'm more interested in some of the things you've seen in your travels uh, and these other jurisdictions, what have been their practices, their programs, their policies. I mean, what have they been doing? What are some um, examples? One of the things that I believe that, have ha- that, that I have seen mm-hmm. different is that they have champions for all of this, for all of the programming. Mm-hmm. They have either an organization and then they have an individual within the government that's connected to champion it. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Therefore, they have better outcomes. They do not go on outputs. They do not just go on activity. People want best practice and that's what they, they are now launching. I mean, I've been to all over the U.S. I've been, you know, to several places, uh, several cities in Canada. I've been all over the Caribbean, mm-hmm. from Trinidad to Jamaica to Barbados. I mean, I've, you know, I've been to a number of those jurisdictions. Um, I've been all over uh, uh, the UK. Uh, they've flown me as far as uh, Jersey, you know, to, to to look at programs and to speak with lots of professionals um, uh, within there. I have also had the privilege of meeting many, many consultants. I mean, I sent you the reports that. I've been a part of, yeah. and a lot of those consultants have come in here. I have met with, you know, uh, um, judges. I've met with um, gang experts. Um, I, I've met with um, uh, police officers from all over the world. Um, I've went to uh, many different um, 
meetings um you know i i remember going to um a big conference in canada and yeah. it had some of the brightest minds um from all over the world and all that conference was it was called um kids not cons yeah. and i went to that probably about 12 years ago in canada and i can tell you doing it was for me i loved it it was a week long of 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 training um and a lot of it was based on prevention mm -hmm. or early intervention right and you know the goal for all of those professionals in there was not about cure it was about how can we come up with not just resources but how can we collaborate a lot of these organizations are finding that no one has all of the money to provide all of the prevention models so therefore we share certain synergies so let's reach across the aisle. Yeah. Here's another thing that came out of a lot of my training and certainly a lot of the um, the collaboration that I have had over the last sort of five years. The organizations in the countries that are actually reaching across the aisle that are saying we're working with the same people, we have to be able to communicate better. Mm -hmm. They're the organizations that are leading the charge with prevention and early intervention. Yeah. What I found is that when we don't do that, our our resources are scattered. They are not delivered in a way that people benefit from them. And then you have departments and certainly NGOs fighting for money to just stay alive. Yeah, so therefore, their mission is never actually fulfilled because all they're thinking about is how do we keep afloat? Yeah. When we don't, like I don't have to provide all of the resources. I, 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 I would prefer not to. Right. My goal is how do I do the best possible training program? Well, I found that, well, I need mental health care. So we have gotten that. We've subcontracted that. I don't need to hire an individual, but I've subcontracted that. But I'm also looking at, you know, how do I get Alex Panton Foundation in to do um, a number of things? You know, how do I get the Department of Counseling Services in? How do I get health services in? So I have a number of NGOs that are coming in to do a number of different things. I will partner with everyone. Right. I, um, a couple of weeks ago, I met with the hundred uh, men of Cayman Group, and I've challenged them. You want to see change? This is not just about giving a hundred dollars anymore. That's easy. You can give a hundred dollars and walk away and pretend that you've actually done something. That's not helping. And while the money helps in a certain regard, the expertise that these men bring to it, if it, you know, a hundred men, a hundred women, they bring expertise. They bring a gang of a people. Physical who, presence. Yeah, they have to have that now. Yeah. We grew up in a community where people were involved in our lives, not just our parents. You talk about wanting to help. If if we don't have that, if, if, if we don't get back to at least some resemblance of that, it doesn't matter how much mm -hmm. money is floating around in Cayman. Yep. We're never going to crack the code, right? And that's what's necessary today, right? We have to get back to where people are wanting to get back involved in community regular people you don't need to be a, an expert in all of this stuff the majority of the interaction that i have yeah. with young people they don't look at me as michael miles the social worker or michael miles the expert in this they look at me as michael miles the mentor yeah you know michael miles the father figure yeah. you know michael miles the friend michael miles the present yeah. you're present absolutely yeah. you know i'm cutting up and i'm laughing and i'm you know <laughs> But they know I'm going to hold them accountable as well. Yeah. We need to get back to that. What I have seen in other jurisdictions is people caring beyond the job. Yeah. And I don't see that here. I see people looking at this. It's just a job. You know, therefore, if I don't like doing and if we are having a personality conflict, then I simply don't work with you, even though it affects like hundreds of people's lives. The pattern is. Yeah. That's what I've yeah. that, like. That's what I've seen. As you shared and you talked about the programs and yes, there are people who participate. Uh, I'm mindful. I won't embarrass her. But there's a lady I know who, very quietly, right? Um, no fanfare, no publicity. But has made such a profound impact in the life of a young child. And to see her interact with this young lady and the changes, just yeah. from a distance, shows you that one person can make a difference. Absolutely, man. And that difference is Absolutely. so significant that a child may not, right, end up not only not in prison, but not pregnant uh, on an unplanned way, but may actually consider continued education from finishing high school with good grades to considering post-high school. 
Now that's a productive citizen in the making, but but for one person interest in that young person, where would that young person be? Just like what you said, Michael, if we didn't have the people in our lives, where would we be today? I get single to single handed to save hundreds of us <laughs> from ourselves, right? I, I like I'm a living proof of that. <clears throat> yep. I mean, my mother was phenomenal. You could keep going, is. right? I, I I could have at one point. <laughs> um you know, but uh, my mother as a single mom yeah. had to work three jobs and I needed to be somewhere. This man single handedly saved us from ourselves. Right? If it wasn't for him being fired off of multiple jobs, spending the time with us, dropping us home, picking us up. I mean, yeah. I, like, I would shudder to think where I would be. And I'm not saying that my mother didn't do a great job. She did a, a, a fantastic job with me. But at the end of the day, she wasn't the community. Right. She was just, she was a piece of the community that helped me. It, he helped quite a bit. When Winston, when I was introduced to Winston Chung at 10 years old, I would have never gone to college unless he inspired us. The 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 things he told us, doing I was never on the college track, yeah. you know, like like that was never gonna be part of my life. Yeah. It wasn't until, you know, Winston Chung said, Kim An is going to change. In order for you to lead in this country, you're going to need a piece of paper. Yeah. And he said that to a lot of us. We, most of us had we were not going to be right. you know, going off to college. And right? what's interesting is that So, you know, you know and, and, and he's you know, while he's gotten, I mean, he's passed <laughs> four years ago, but, I, you know, he was in Kim Anyan. I've met many, many teachers. Richard Marshall, who, you know, also passed a couple of years ago, you know, was my first football coach, you know, at Georgetown Primary School. He's my principal. He's my friend. He's my mentor, you know, and, and you know, was in Kim Anyan when, when, when he came here, right? From, he was originally from Barbados, but cared for me even as an adult, Checked in mm. with my mother, followed my career for many, many years, even when I went off to college. He was part of my community. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can tell you loads of things. Lorna Lumsden was part of my community. She was one of my <laughs> first teachers at Georgetown Primary School. Yep. Was also part of my community. Was not Kimanian, right? right? So there's, there's, there's been lots and lots of folks who that I think our country surrounded our kids with that was good for us. Yeah. It's the it's that the part that's the part that I think that we're missing the most, and we're trying to replace that with police, prison, and the court system. Yeah, and we're failing miserably at that, and we're spending what two hundred million dollars. I can say easily, you know, when you add up the prison cost, the police cost, more than that, man. You know, the yeah. you know the court cost. You, like you're you're spending, you know, hundreds of millions. Million. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you and 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 can you sustain that? But that's an the, annual expenditure, but their cost is even greater to the society. Totally right? agree with you. But something you shared that I want to ask when when you know, when we come back from the break, when Miss Susan tells us that we, because I'm not talking to she said we mm. can't talk, right? Because <laughs> she knows we like to talk. We're talking good things as we're talking to Michael Miles. But what you just shared tells us that in our community, we have all these people from elsewhere who've come here, who've integrated, who've uh, to some extent has been able to acclimate despite the weather, no matter if they're from the Caribbean or not. Yeah. But who has adopted Cayman and had been adopted by Cayman but for some reason we seem to be becoming more divided and we're losing that sense of community because there is a, a decreased sense of unity so how this, do we get that back you know a, a major part of what I fight for today mm -hmm. is the time right so I I do the rotary circuit you know I every year rotary invites me in to do a chart and for the first couple of years, I used to go in and say, hey, you know, I need money. I, you know, if you know, if you want me to be successful in this, you know, can you donate scholarships? And they throw some money at me and, 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 it, and, and it was great. These days, I don't even ask for money. I say, you know, guys, can you spend 10 minutes, pop by the center, have a heart to heart with our young people, show them that you care, show them that you're showing up for them. And for me, it's been disappointing. I, I, for me, it's been very, very disappointing that they don't spend that time. And I, a lot of it, I think people simply just feel that money is going to solve the problem. Hmm. And every time I get into a conversation with folks and they always ask me what the solution is. And I always say, do you have a, like, do you have some time? Everybody in our country know where a single mom lives that are dealing, that are probably overwhelmed by her, her, her family her challenges, yeah. and we don't help. Everybody knows that, 
you know, they uh, everybody probably has a, a young person on their street who are they can predict that hey, you know, if that kid isn't don't get some mentoring or some coaching or some counseling or or, or in a place where you know uh, they they're probably going to end up in a very bad place. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Everybody can tell me where these kids are. You know what people are doing? They're asking me to intervene. Like if I am the gatekeeper of everybody's, but you can only be one person at a time. Precisely, and yeah. this is what I'm saying. This Why is, can't you get involved? Yeah. Right. Remember the discussion we had, and oftentimes, if it wasn't, I think, for a professional argument, it might have been considered an argument. I would say all children are at risk, and then you help me to appreciate that. Yeah, but some are more so than Greater. others <coughs> at that point, right? Yeah. And and I keep telling people. If we look closely, just like you shared, where there's that person in a home with no parenting or with one, you know, single parent, right? Yep. There are children who are in a home with two parents who may or may not be working and there are, you know, paid help in the home, but the child is still raising him or herself up to whatever devices and whichever, yep. still at risk, right? One of our listeners shares that we need a, a close collaboration between all people in the services. You know, departments are operating in the silos, right? And agree with you that early interventions, yep. you know, for our children and families are needed. And if we start, you know, earlier education, we can also identify and assess the needs of our children and families because prevention is the key. Every major report says that. But this person writes, and the whole rehabilitation process is in need of reform, which is, is what you shared. Yep. Which parliamentarian, parliamentarian we put that forward? Now, <laughs> is it that we keep hearing it? All the reports after report pretty much says the same thing. Same thing. We hear that we need a will, societal will, a political there will. There has to be a champion for this, Dwayne. I, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. I don't care how many more consultants that they bring in here. They have to be a person in government yeah. as, a, as a political head, as a chief officer head that says, I am going to spearhead this and I'm going to remove some of the bureaucracy that's around this. Okay. Simply just saying that people are going to collaborate and there are synergies out there and, you know, yeah, you know, um, government departments need to do X, Y, and Z. Like, I've been in government long enough to know that that's just a talking point. Yeah. Right? People act like there has to be a leader or leaders at the top that says, listen, I don't care what your personality conflict is. Either get out of our way or we're going to move you Lead, over. Lead, follow, get away, right? Precisely. It, right. Like, either you are going to get out of my way or we're going to move you, yeah. right? But this is happening, and we don't have that. Can we pick up on that? You said, if I understood, as we go into our, our news break, uh, at the government level, political leadership, yeah. or the appointed leadership at a high level, we need someone to spearhead it. Yeah. Can we talk more about that? You just alluded to something, sure. but be very specific and candid. Sure. And I say, listen, this is what we need to do. This is what we're doing. This is what we're not doing. Uh, would you be willing to do that? Absolutely. I mean, I, I'll commit this to you. If you say something like this and people uh, take you on and I can agree with it, I would defend you even at the cost of my job. I hate but if you do something that is stupid, I will help you nonetheless. How about that? <laughs> sure. All right. I, mean, I got your back. Yeah. Join us after the break. From Radio Cayman's Newsroom. This is Headlines, local, regional, international news. Travelers from Dallas will be able to enjoy daily nonstop service on American Airlines between Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport and the Grand Cayman starting on December 5th, 2024. The increase in service is due to high demand for the Cayman Islands in the market during this period. The Cayman Islands Department of Tourism is working closely with American Airlines to promote the route. The daily service for this route will run through March 2025. Good afternoon, I'm Dion Anglin with your headlines in news elsewhere. Climate change is affecting the speed of the Earth's rotation and could impact how we keep time, a study says. Accelerating melt from Greenland and Antarctica is adding extra water to the world's seas, redistributing mass. That is very slightly slowing the Earth's rotation, but the planet is still spinning faster than it used to. And allies of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Disney have reached a settlement agreement over how Walt Disney World is governed in the future. It comes after a judge ruled in January that it was legal for the state to make changes to the amusement theme park's district government. A row between the two sides have been going on for almost two years. That's a wrap of your headlines. I'm Dion Anglin. More news available at 
www.radiokman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline, Headline News. News. HSA's Urgent Care Clinic is now open seven days per week to serve you better. Visit our dedicated team at Urgent Care, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and weekends and public holidays, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. No appointment necessary. If you are experiencing non-life-threatening symptoms and conditions, such as the cold and flu, sprains and cuts, earaches, nausea and vomiting, visit Urgent Care's walk-in clinic at the main entrance of the Georgetown Hospital, now open every day. At HSA, we are committed to caring for you. Born in Watering Place, Kamenbrack, on the 8th day of July, 1936, Captain Fred Elman Scott was the fifth child born to Nalio and Vera Scott. Captain Scott worked the seas for over 52 years, a career which saw him span the global currents. In 1953, he joined his first ship, the Beretta, a local cargo vessel, signing on as deck boy, working his way up to Bosun. In 1955, he joined National Bulk Carriers, working his way up to able-bodied seamen. In 1959, he signed on on the Ore Meteor to go to Marine School in New York, attaining a third mate's license. He joined the Bulk Petrol as third officer, where during one voyage, he was solely responsible for using more slant signaling to save a sister ship which had run aground. He continued to flourish and attained second mate, chief mate, master mariner and radio operator licenses. In October of 1969, he took a job on oil exploration ships as a captain in Brazil. Captain Scott would later move from Brazil, where he spent the next 20 years piloting cruise ships and tankers in Grand Cayman. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back and trust and pray that you are not only looking forward to a very blessed, safe and enjoyable Easter, but as you are attentive, if you wish to call, our guest is Michael Miles. 949-8837-949-6990. And you can WhatsApp, call, message, voice note. I'm not sure what else they can do to WhatsApp, but yeah, it's there. 925-3261. Uh, thank you very much, you know, Michael, for sharing with us. And as, as candid as you are in your, you know, conversation with us, yep. there's a little question, very passionate, very professional, mm -hmm. very respectful. And I'm hoping as people hear very pointed you know, sentiments that they'll come away saying, wait a minute, there but the grace of God go I. What can I do? Yeah. You were sharing, and, and I wanted to ask you if it's okay, mm -hmm. uh, before the break, you know, you talk about those champions and the political and yep. the pointed. What, what else? I mean, tell us so that we don't miss a... We have a very large social services, um, and I'm not talking about the, just as just the department, but we have a very large social services setting from youth services to social services to um, uh, sports services. Like we have a very large um, contingent of departments. The challenges that we find is that no one coordinates that. Um, no one champions. How do we ensure that the right resources is getting to the right right children mm -hmm. and or the right families? And what happens is is that we have multiple departments, multiple agencies, including 
NGOs and, and, and other private sector agencies that are involved in these families' lives. But no one meets about that. Like no one gets together and say, okay, Dwayne, you're going to do X, I'm going to do Y, Sarah's going to do uh, uh, Z, this one's going to do, like no one does that. Mm-hmm. What happens is is that we go from one extreme to the other. Either we, we either we give them so much resources that we start to duplicate resources, and I've been involved, so no one can tell me that it's different, or no one helps at all, or the all or or if I'm given resources, you assume that I'm given resources, so you don't give any resources, but because you don't like me, you don't pick up the phone and call me, or you mm. don't send me an email. <laughs> it becomes all, almost contagious uh, or or contentious with the relationship with wow. working with departments, right? When I was uh, um, in charge of the the um, the youth at risk program within the Ministry of Education, a major part of my job was was to collaborate with agencies. And one of the things I found out that multiple agencies were delivering the same service to the, to the family or to the youth. And what I was doing is overwhelming either the family or the youth. Mm-hmm. But agencies didn't like each other. The heads didn't like each other. Hmm. So therefore, no one wanted to sit around the table and resolve how we were going to deliver the resources. So what agencies were doing was they just weren't, one, they weren't actually successful in delivering services. So those kids floated through the system. What I am talking about and what I have saw in my travels around the world is that there is a champion at each level. There's a champion at a department level that says, all of this stuff flows through me and I'm not going to let you block this regardless of how you feel about the next guy or the next program or the next agency. Mm. Everything flows through me and we're going to get this done. Mm. From there, there has to be a champion at a chief officer level or a couple of them. Chief officer to chief officers because education and social services share the same students, same children, same families, right? They're the two biggest agencies and quite often, they don't coordinate services. So we saw with health and social services used to yeah. be administered way back when. Absolutely. Now we split. Can I just ask, I'm not putting words in your mouth, yeah. right? I'm certainly not being inflammatory, but increasingly I'm being like you, uh, impassioned, right? Yeah. Are we paying a lot of lip service to things? Is it that I think we talk a good game about what that looks like. Uh-huh. And, and I've been in all of those meetings as well. Like we would come out and we would say, hey, you know, here's what we're doing. But... Is it working, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You can write a lot of stuff on paper. You can write all the, you know, like I've seen loads of, you know, flow charts of how this should work. People still have to work this, right? You can put all this on paper. You can put all this in email. You can put all this in consultation reports. How many, cons- like I give you at least 14 consultation reports that we have not acted on any of them on. Yeah. Or we put in, we've cherry picked things that we felt that we wanted to do. And then we called it a success. So then that's the, the other thing that was sort of superficial. Like, like you just go around the table, you're touching tables. It's not meaningful. It's just, it's not, it's wow. not. And, wow. and then we, and then we are shocked when a young man or a young woman could pick up a gun and walk into a place and shoot. Or, you know, you have um, young girls getting pregnant. Um, you know, like I had meetings with churches and I said, there has to be because we have more churches now than we've ever had. We have o- o- almost 100 plus churches right across the island. And I've had several ministers who've called me and I've said, increase your outreach. People aren't walking into your church anymore. It's not 30 years ago, 40 yeah. years ago when, you know, going to church was an habitual thing. It was a routine. Really just like Correct. Right? <laughs> Kids today aren't like that's yeah. not a routine today. Yeah. Right, so you in your membership have to now create an outreach, and that could simply be okay. We're gonna have a basketball tournament on a Friday night. We're gonna have a football tournament. We're gonna have a potluck, right? So a lot of religion, but no relationship. It's it's not, wow. and they're trying to preach to kids who are not actually familiar with the gospel or Christianity or anything like that. They're trying to stuff that down these kids' throats, and these kids are saying, "I'm not having that. Sorry, I don't even know you." Yeah. Right. But you're going to preach to me on a Sunday, but on a Monday, you'll pass me in your car and you won't pick me up on the road, yeah. right? Wow. Or, or I'm going to school hungry. You're telling me about, you know, how Jesus loves me, but I don't know where my next meal is going to come from, yeah. right? You can't do that, right? In, for me to be successful, everyone that walk in my door, and I have dealt with over 700 plus people in the last five years, I've had to develop a relationship if I want to help them. 
Mm-hmm. If I truly want to help them, I need to get to know them. I need to get to know their families. Yeah. Right? That's what I've had to do. You go on. Sorry. Uh, well, my yeah. goal, my suggestion and proposal have always been it cannot start at a police level. We're always trying to start things at a police level. <laughs> we like we don't start things at a community level anymore. Yeah, we're, we're 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 simply saying let's just hire more police officers. So take a hell hundred approach uh, as okay. Yeah, let's give the commission of police more guns because yeah. that's going to solve the problem. Uh, as I think, as a social worker, I believe you shared with me, and I've heard others say that when you're talking to a child, you literally get down at the level. So you may. If it's difficult for you physically, but you try to sit on the floor at a level so that you, you don't make them feel this imposing figure. Yeah, I'm looking at that analogy and, s- and sort of interpreting what you're saying. We can't, I don't know, urbanize the, a police force where they become urban con- commandos. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody's saying we don't need police in the glass tent, but you're sharing where are we in the community, back to what you said, right? You can either give them the fish or you can teach them the fish. People hearing you share what you share may agree with you, but they may say, boy, he's castigating. And h- how, how do we not not defend what you're saying? How do we respond in an, an inclusive and compassing way that we make this thing positive? Because I think folks are going to say whatever they need to say, mm-hmm. Dwayne, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah. like I said, I've I've made the rounds. I have talked to just about everyone um, mm-hmm. from Rotary to Kiwanis to you know, to the Lions Club, I, you know, I, I've, I've met with folks from the 100 Women's Club. I met with, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, um, folks from the 100 Men's Club. I've went to Cayman Finance, um, you know, went to the HR, um, the HR Professionals Organization. People cannot say that, you know, that I'm not collaborative or inclusive. Mm-hmm. I've been begging for folks to come in and say, hey, here's what I would like to do. You know, the majority of the folks that walk into the center are not Caymanians that are that have that are real of volunteers of of my organization. They're not Caymanians, yeah. right? That the, these are folks that are saying, "Hey, you know, I heard you on the radio or saw something in the newspaper. How can I help?" And, and this is as you shared earlier, and I was gr- reference of that young lady, not Caymanian either, right? These are people who are in a community with good heart, and I want to talk about that unity that is seemingly lacking in our society. We talk about being our brother's keeper, we talk about a time. But is it that we are now not only having uh, systems and programs that, like agencies and silos, but we are cliquish, for whatever better word. This little group here, this little group here, and we're not coming together. I, is I, that your perspective? You know, yes and no. I like What I see now is I want to be on top of the mountain. I want to get paid for being on top of the mountain. I just don't want to do the work. Hmm. And I think that that's what I've seen across the board. Everybody wants to, you know, to be up on the mountain, but very few people that I've seen is delivering, right? Hmm. Um, I've just heard that um, KPMG has been awarded a sizable amount to restructure government outputs to outcomes. Phenomenal. Great job. I, 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 I can't wait to see it because I think, you know, we've been talking about it for a very long time. When you look at government outputs, there's a lot of activity but there's very little success, right? When you hear the police talk about their success, what does it come down to? Arrest. It comes down to us arresting people, putting people in jail, hmm. right? Looking northwards outputs. Here's how many people we have in jail. We are keeping them in jail. There's never an output or an outcome that says, hey, when these 50 people left Northward prison, they haven't come back here and they're all working. I'll give you a personal example from early on. Uh, maybe a couple of decades into my working life uh, as an adult. I had a job. There were three young people, well, not so young, but, you know, working. And I said, you know, would like your permission to train them. The organization refused. But they showed an interest. And I was able to break down, you know, my job into three, give each one a little bit more responsibility. Now, there were two, two challenges. The organization was not supportive. Right. Secondly, you know, there was someone unbeknownst to me at the time who was being groomed, right, to sort of filter in mm-hmm. at the expense of me and these other three. Mm-hmm. Now, when I look at that, that that sort of behavior thirty years ago, 
is that still it is common i i i'm 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 here to tell you it is i yeah. you know and i like i've seen it so mm. it's the reason why my approach has been different yeah. to training in general i don't train that that being a kemanian is a qualification no i don't train that being a kemanian is an entitlement for you i train that we are now globalization have happened to us mm -hmm. and as kemanians we now have to be better we have to be competitive now so i train on kemanians being competitive how can i get a young person to get more certifications how can I get them to be more resilient? Because you're gonna hear a lot of no's. You're gonna, mm. you're like I've heard no's. I like in a, my first four and a half years of training, I funded the entire operation myself. Yeah. Right. I worked seven days a week, sometimes sixteen hours a day, walking this country, raising funds so Kimaians can get training to ensure that my staff got paid and our um our resources were purchased. I didn't complain about it. I, I, I knew what the mission was, and I've continued to do that. Even to this day, we're starting to turn the corner, but I'm still plowing and pounding yeah. the pavement and doing a number of different things because my organization have, have shifted. We've had to pivot because we don't do training anymore only. We are now doing more social work and more holistic stuff, including training. So for them to get through the door, I now have to ensure that they can get to me. Five years ago, I don't really care if they got to me. I, you know, if that was their responsibility, they were the one that wanted to be a plumber, then you need to walk in the door. Today, I understood that there are some fundamental things that are going to keep them out of training. Then when they got to me, I recognized that, oh, um, they can't function because they didn't have breakfast. So I need to provide that. Oh, wow. They, I got them breakfast, but they don't have the appropriate clothing to now get out and get a job. There's so many different layers that yeah. I've had to put in place that I like. I could have said that's not that's really not my job. But experience is a great teacher. As you've done this, I'm hearing you say that you've now come to acknowledge what not only are the needs but also the impediments. Now it is for us to respond. Uh, for those who want to call the, uh, on the WhatsApp, it's nine two five thirty two six two one. If you call using a regular cell call, respectfully, we can't answer that to put you on air. That's just the way the system yeah. works, right? I'm not going to profess to know that. I'm not <laughs> I. But otherwise, if you want to call 949-8037 or 949-6990. Michael, I want to ask you about that, but let me read this. This listener writes, militarizing our country is not the answer. I agree. We must uh, strongly advocate for community involvement of Caymanians and uh, you know the need about the village raising the child involves community involvement. We need more education and, and the like to promote that. But to your point just then, as we are uh, understanding, experiencing, hey, these are the things that are happening yep. and growing our population the way it has, seeing the increased numbers and all of the, the different people from everywhere. We have some great people. We do. Is it then that we are at risk of what was the command that we thought existed? What is the command that we thought or think that we want is now somehow being displaced because either the, it's been uh, you know this imposition of some other force or culture or practice or influence we've that is built, displacing it? We've built a country, Dwayne. We've not built people, mm -hmm. right? You know, we've... We built a country, we've put in a lot of development here, and we've not brought our people up to recognize that the, that we as a country, as 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 countrymen, we're now gonna have to compete. We are still into this thing that being a Caymanian is enough. I see it every single day. And Seriously? I'm dealing with yes. Wow, okay. I see it every day. Well, young people are walking in and they're thinking that they simply just should be hired because they're Caymanian. They're not. We are not even the the majority anymore, right? <laughs> we are in the minority at this point. Uh -huh. So, and they're hearing it from their families, and they're walking into me at 18 or 19 years old, and they're feeling that, well, you know, my mama told me, or my daddy told me, or, 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 or my grandmama told me that, you know, I should get this job. Show me your qualifications. I'm actually hearing that from people who say they're hearing it from the teachers in our schools. Yeah. And I sit on air the other day because it wasn't to disparage, but it was such a profound statement that it, it, it rocked me. 
my experience with educators is that they worked hard. Uh, they work consistently. They found, like like you have, resources from their own pockets yep. to help us as children. Didn't matter who the child was. Right. Now, that may be a, a different approach. I say that to ask you if that is happening, and as you shared, statistically, uh, what is defined as a Cayman, and even uh, by law or generation or otherwise, is statistically a, a lower number relative to the wider population. What what impacts uh, that that may have negative otherwise do you see on our, our community? Well, what what's happened now is that we've completely priced our people out of the country. The okay. cost of living has gone through the roof. You know, the folks that are uh, that were the struggling class, they're mm. now in poverty. Uh -huh. um, when you look at basic rental, right? You know, you you can't find anything decent in a decent area for uh, less than two thousand mm -hmm. or twenty five hundred dollars. Um, you have very large CUC bills. So people can't even, people don't have disposable income anymore, right? We, we are surviving or we're thriving. There's no middle, there's, there's, there's like, there's no middle class. They're treading anymore. water most of the time. Eh? Precisely. That, like, mm -hmm. that's what I've seen. And, and, and again, as I said, uh, I am now like, it's not just the unemployed that's coming in my doors. Mm -hmm. It is folks who are getting full, who have full time jobs who are saying, wow, I need an extra qualification or I need an extra training to ensure that I can consistently now compete to raise my salary, mm -hmm. right? People are now, I, there's a lot of Caymans that are now identifying this. Whereas before, they'll just sit in a position and all of a sudden, they recognize that an expat has been hired and that person have been promoted because they're coming in and actually getting different certifications and are being promoted. So we are now saying, how do we keep our people competitive? Right? How do we ensure that everyone that comes through our doors that we train, we are looking at career paths. I don't talk jobs to young people. You need to start somewhere. And whether you're starting on the beach pushing wave runners, that's not your event. Like, that's not your stop, right? That is a journey. Your journey is the CEO's position. So let me, let's get ready for that part. And here's what that's going to take. We are not having those conversations. We are having the conversations of let's get a job. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. What I'm talking about is how do you be a, a owner of that? Okay, so you want to be in water sports. How do you buy the 100-foot boat? You yeah. know, how do you actually own that boat? How do you be not just the person who works in it, but be the captain of that boat? And I think that we need to now change the conversation rather than simply just encouraging people to just get a job. Because as long as we're doing that, we're not going to compete here. Yeah, Michael, we have to break, but I want to ask as we come back to your point, is this problem then further complicated and compounded when Caymanians are seeing their parents, their older siblings, and other members of the community who have law degrees but can't get articles, who have law degrees but for whatever reason can't yeah. get into the legal profession, who are returning with master's degrees, yeah. who are accountants and, and other other employable skills but are not being employed, including yeah. not just financial services but hospitality. Yeah. Just a just a question. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about it. Absolutely. But I also want to talk about it, that yeah. crime and youth in the lake. Sure. Michael Miles sits with us. Stay tuned for talk today. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. From boat days to beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with, with optional, optional cookie, cookie platters, platters for, for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box, box to, go to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one, one cookie, cookie and, and one, one bag, bag of chips. chips. 
for all occasions and celebrations. Let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I go in flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. Find your dream car with a Cayman National Vehicle Loan. Enjoy 100% financing, up to eight-year repayment, and a 7% fixed interest rate for the first five years. For eco-friendly cars, we'll waive your commitment fee. This only applies to new vehicles. Call 949-8300 or email lending at caymannational.com today. Every day, thousands of us use our roads. I drive to work. My dad drives me to school. I make deliveries across the island. But with every journey comes responsibility. Our actions behind the wheel can have serious consequences. So let's make a commitment to safety. The Cayman Islands government invites you to take the Safe Drivers Pledge. The pledge is our opportunity to show our dedication to creating a safer environment on our roads. Do it for your community. For your loved ones. For yourself. Let's make our roads safer together and say no more for 2024. Visit www.gov.ky forward slash road safety for more information and to take the pledge. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks for joining us. If you wish to give us a shout and share your thoughts, 949-8037 or 949-6990, or you can WhatsApp call at 925-3261 as we speak to Michael Myers. <clears throat> now, as we get into the break, Michael, I was asking a couple of things, and I certainly appreciate what you were sharing with us, right? Um, before I ask anything else, what more would you like to... I, you know, you know, like I've said to you, the, in order for us to crack the code on this, we're spending millions, right? And we have spent hundreds of millions over a course of time on, um, I would call it, a, 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 I guess, cure type mm. solutions, um, which hasn't worked. We've continued to spend more money on core type solutions or, or, or cure type solutions. We're mm. now on the verge of building another prison that's going to cost us, you know, uh, you know, according to the government, $150 million, but we know that by the time that's built, that's $200 million. Or, or five. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, is it, what are we after here? Is it going to make us safer? Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you right now, just looking at our neighbors in Canada, the U.S., and around the region, Building bigger prisons isn't gonna has not made do, those companies uh, have less drugs in them, less crime, less teenage pregnancy. You, you know, like it hasn't been less, right? When jurisdictions put processes in place, programming in place, and there are champions for all of this stuff, and there's cooperation. You don't have to like me doing, but we need to cooperate with each other because we have families that we're working with. A shared outcome, right? Correct. And that is what's lacking right now. Uh, keep talking, Michael, but uh, let Miss Susan know we do have a WhatsApp call coming in Kay. as we take the call. Uh, you want to, sure. I didn't interrupt you, but. Sure. No, um, please. All right. And Michael Miles uh, is our guest. We'll answer that call. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I don't know. We will. <laughs> we will. We will. We, will. we, will. we will. just need to figure out how to do that. Uh, but, but that's the thing. It's personalities and pettiness. Politics as opposed to the like. And um, to the WhatsApp caller, we are trying to figure out how to press the button. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Interesting, boy. Mm-hmm. I, I, I say this again. I love technology, <laughs> but I, I do not allow technology to be my master. Yeah. And yeah. On, on Monday week gone, I'd say to a friend, just proudly, man, I wish I had to have one of these phones, right? Yeah. Friday, I found out about it. And I share this again to say that we have become so dependent on so much that we we don't almost understand. Almost enslaved to it. Almost enslaved yeah. to it, right? But we're forgetting, as you keep reminding us, it's about connection. It is. It's about community. It is. It's about a commitment to our country, true being, truly invested in our people. I totally agree right? with you. I mean, without that, I think we are, we're just spinning our wheels. We're talking right. a lot. Yeah of garbage in order to make ourselves feel comfortable. Feel better? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what I've <coughs> seen because they, the figures of what we are spending doesn't, there's no, there's no, there's no outcome, you know, at this point. Let's take this call. Uh, mm-hmm. So I speak to Michael Miles. Right. My listen, I hate that looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate putting this on. I got to wear it every day, guy. <laughs> I wear it in my sleep. Let's take this call. Hey, welcome. Thank you for sharing with us. Well, good, good good afternoon, Dwayne. Good afternoon, uh, Miss Miles. Good afternoon. Where are you, Senor? Bienvenido. Well, I I I'm I, I'm good. Um, but uh, it's it's it, this is like an old discussion. But 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 there are certain things which, no matter how often you discuss them, it doesn't make them unimportant. In fact, if anything, uh, it, it underlines it, it underlines the need to to take them seriously. You talked about uh, people coming back from overseas and and getting qualifications and not getting jobs. And uh, in addition to that, you mentioned specifically about not being able to get articles. And I I want to address in particular the issue of getting articles. This is something I have never, ever understood in relation to Cayman. In the country I came from, uh, a country far away from here, Uh, When I went to law school decades ago, the government didn't have enough lawyers, like didn't have enough local lawyers. So they had this special program to ensure that people are sponsored to go to law school and study. uh, And then they are given articles by government. You didn't graduate from law school if you were a local person without having a guaranteed articles with the government. That's the way it was, because there was a target. But in Cayman, I was in the portfolio of legal affairs for 12 years. I just found that there was no attempt, and they didn't even pretend that they were trying to to encourage uh, Caymanians to come there and do articles. Uh, and I, as I got more into Caymanian society, I found there were a number of people working in different parts of the government, some of them in, in, in professions nothing to do with law. But they had... Um, they had the degree and they were looking for articles and I found that to be very odd. What is supposed to happen basically is like that 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 portfolio should have maybe five to ten places available for articles every single year so that people can get, get, get can, uh, can 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 get articles. I don't know why. Now, if I can just address very briefly mm-hmm. the, the, the broader issue of people getting jobs. They again, there is a lack of political will. I, I, I'm not saying that governments haven't done some good things here and there in other areas, but in the area of job preferences, I think every single government I've observed in Cayman in the last 20 years has not done a good job. Because I, I in a previous call, I, I mentioned to you, uh, uh, Dwayne, uh, I think a section 26 and 41 of the public service management law. And that one merely says, oh, a Caymanian can be given a job if their qualifications are roughly the same as a foreigner. No, 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 no. No country does it like that. All countries say, like, if you qualify for the job, you should be given the job. And to me, unless those fundamentals are dealt with, we are just spinning the wheels, as Mr. Mr. Miles is saying. We are just spinning the wheels. And then the problem also is that, you see, Cayman is a house divided. And you know what the Bible says about a house divided? It cannot hmm. stand. Because you, you've got a number of Caymanians who have sold out, who include politicians, 
who do not really care or are scared to do something for their people. They are in a cabal with uh, a number of status holders and even permanent residents, and they are trying to keep Caymanians down. For example, it has been said that, well, the politicians don't decide who to appoint. You know, it is the chief officers who decide. No, 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 but some of those chief officers are sellouts to the Caymanian people. What can be done is that the cabinet can sit down and they draw targets. They are, they are elected for a reason, including, you know, creating jobs. They should, they, they should, the government can sit down in cabinet, sets down some targets and policies to be pursued to achieve those targets, and then tell the deputy governor, deputy governor, do you need money for training? Do you need money for to train to, to, to help us meet these targets? And that should be done. Unless these things are done, uh, Dwayne, Mr. Mm -hmm. Miles, mm -hmm. we are just talk. We are just talking. Yeah. We are just talking. It is not as if people don't know the solution. The solutions are there. I agree. And if I can close, if I can close on this one, uh, a friend of mine who ran, and this is a friend who ran in 2017 in Cayman, addressed the issue of of, of 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 immigration, for example, because that's related to the job preferences. And this is a guy who has got friends across all spectra spectrums, proud Caymanian, but with a very good knowledge and friendships around all communities. He said, have a system where you don't give more status and PR than the natural birth rate. Because unless you do that, then you will find that ultimately Caymanians will be 5 10% until they almost disappear. Mm -hmm. So he just said, no, no, don't keep people out, but but have a system and certain targets. That was never taken up. Unless these things are taken up seriously by the government, I think it is a waste of time because everybody knows at least at a general level what the solutions are. It, it is just as a problem in there. Some people have sold out, and the solution is to find out which people have sold out because we are told in the current cabinet, actually, only about two or three people are doing what Caymanians want them to do in, in, in these two areas because the rest of them are sold out. So they are not able to achieve those ends. And those members of cabinet have spoken up loudly. They have spoken out there to say, look, you keep telling us these things, but we go to cabinet, but there's only two or three of us. And that is a fundamental problem that has to be addressed. I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Thank problem. you very much for that. And uh, I believe you have a break to take. When you come back, I want to share some things that one of our listeners uh, and Michael, I think, you know, maybe, just maybe, uh, there's still hope. Turn us off to the break. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I go in flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have bar. Barbados, going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066.
It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. From boat days to beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with, with optional, optional cookie, cookie platters, platters for, for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box, box to go, go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one, one cookie, cookie and, and one, one bag, bag of chips. chips for all occasions and celebrations. Let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. Discover your dream home with Cayman Nationals Home Loan. Get up to 95% financing, repayment up to 40 years, and just a 0.5% commitment fee. Your interest rate? Depending on your risk factors, it'll be fixed or variable. Plus, you get a pre-approved credit card. This is a limited time offer. Dial 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. Hey, Cayman, this is Ilian Powery, your Miss Universe Cayman Islands 2023. Do you want the opportunity to help shape the future of youth and sports in the Cayman Islands? All you have to do is complete the National Youth and Sports Survey found at gov.ky forward slash YSP. This is your chance to make a lasting impact on our community. Have your say today, Cayman, at gov.ky forward slash YSP. This announcement is brought to you by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Heritage. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks for joining us, and thanks to, to Michael Myers. I know that I can say, you know, we appreciate you listening, recognizing that many are preparing for you know, what, for some, hopefully will be a very safe, long, and enjoyable you know, Easter weekend. For some, it's just, you know, more work. But as you listen, if you want to call and share your thoughts, please do so, 949-8037 or 949-6990, or you can WhatsApp call at... Nine two five thirty two six two one. Like, can I read some of these mm -hmm. comments? Sure. Uh, listener writes him. that we, you know we need a cradle to grave policy. Everyone wants to operate in isolation, right? Mm -hmm. And education wants to educate with, without considering the need to remove the barriers to education. The social services wants to give by treating the symptoms and not the causes. Mm -hmm. The government wants to put crime at the feet of police, but it's all linked, right? And. Uh, when you know uh, people reach Michael, for instance, very few will continue with their life change. Uh, we need to reach them earlier, and turning Cayman into a welfare state is not the way. Now, uh, this listener said, you know, just tuning in, and this is uh, what was shared as a while back. But Michael, you covered that. This is supporting yep. what you shared. It would yep. appear that we seem, as you said. We know the problem. We do. So and we're not dealing with millions of people. We're not even dealing with hundreds of thousands. We're not even dealing with tens of thousands. Handful of people. We're not. We're not dealing with tens of thousands of people that we need to serve. We're dealing with a handful of people, and m I would say maybe hundreds, uh, but not tens of thousands, that if we link this as interagency, um, uh, e even private sector and public sector coming together, to sit down and have real conversations, putting personality conflicts aside, putting likes and dislikes aside, and come come in and said, okay, here's what here's what we are going to do, not what the government's going to do. Here's what we're going to do as a country, um, and let's get the input. But let's move forward as opposed to people grandstanding and trying to get a position. Let's do the work. Okay, with that in mind, this person listening obviously is here. Well, I yeah. shouldn't say obviously, but presumably is here. Yep. So we have the resource here. Uh, people know, as you shared, yep. the issue. Um, but just generally speaking, you said there needs to be a will, a political will. It has the to be a political will, and it has to be a civil service will 
where folks in the civil service aren't blocking it because it's going to create more more work for them or it's going to remove budgets from them and that's i mean it's a lot of what i've seen it's okay. well you know if we fix this problem we're going to lose that budget right, <laughs> right? Like a, like so why 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 would i want to fix like why is northward you know uh, in a position where they want to fix the prison system I, that's their well, employment that's their that's I their mean, output right okay so let me ask a question as we take this call all right you can talk about it some more after the call if you wish but if someone and because it needs to be as i understand it and you can yeah. you know guide me make sure i have it correct yeah. a political figure or political entity uh was to champion these things i want to think about it we'll take the call and you can help me to understand it to what extent do you think that they will have initially a uh, successful election and being elected right i think that they would keep it at the forefront these are things that are at every kitchen table but will they get elected if they go up and said what you say i saying? believe so i um i think if enough people are saying this i think that it is going to happen because these are the things that are that that pe- parents are sitting down and talking about like we are now sitting down and talking about yep. you know gun violence we are sitting down and talking about pregnancy drugs alcohol we're we're sitting down and talking about all of these things these are things that are kitchen table things that are that, yep. that are impacting not just Caymanians but the, the country. community as well it 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 yep. it's impacting all of us yeah. you know i um i made a statement some some years ago that we've sat down and complained about drunk driving but there is a liquor store on just about every corner in this country you could go to any gas station and now mm. um purchase alcohol 7 days a week so we're complaining about things that we have created right and and then we are saying to the police well we need more police presence and the commission of police is saying well if you want more police presence i need a bigger budget <laughs> right and all we all we had to do is say you know something we are not going to allow you know uh um Esso and Rubis to sell alcohol right on uh and and we will allow ex you know uh, the uh, tourists to come in here and dictate when they buy alcohol and and cuz in their country they can buy 24 hours a day 7 days a week well that's they don't run our country right we it, like we are <laughs> we are making a country for them and we should not and what it's doing it's creating more problems for us yeah, because they're not staying here long term right. right so we're making a lot of these things available and you know people are like well but i'm running a business i'm not disputing you're not running a business i'm saying that, that business now is crippling our community right they're really killing our people correct okay and now we have to now do something to rectify yeah. that we cannot just say every business should be given this freedom to do whatever they want when they want if it's impact in our community just like drink driving at this point in time we're having more and more accidents i mean you saw the news where a guy was mowed down on the road right you you you're now seeing more uh um uh pedestrians getting hit you're seeing more uh folks on bicycles getting hit right we're seeing more and more almost a lawlessness huh? absolutely i mean like you see on a friday night we wake up Saturday the morning you can be sure that there have been several accidents and 90% of them is drunk driving speeding, or right. speeding on on right. the road let's take this call if we can mate sure hey welcome thanks for calling up oh, call hung up all right or or keeps dropping or something mike can sure. i just read more sure uh, in relation to the question whether you know the politicians would get elected with this person rights yes but they need to educate the public of where we are and where we are going Agreed. Uh, and and shared data shared evidence but the ministers don't want to even have that conversation they don't. Uh, they but don't why is that it cuz it's not sexy i mean what what we we would prefer to talk about you know multiple uh planes coming in um earth shattering um tourism records you know more road developments that we are going to do we don't want to address the ills behind all of it mm-hmm. and and i find that shameful that we don't want to have those conversations and when you have those conversations you're a troublemaker or you're <laughs> negative right uh-huh. so these are the things that you know people are so shocked and 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 so outside of themselves when you know uh an open you know a uh, a shooting could be open like that when we've had multiple shootings and i've showed them this i'm like so that is repulsive but we've had all of these shootings that have been unsolved but that doesn't repulse you like we can have a shooting in harlem or behind funkatang or you know up on john mclean drive and that's not repulsive to folks but l- but being at ed bushfield or being at kemana bay that's repulsive right i mean it, it's it's ludicrous 
right? <sighs> That's the part that I am, you know, that I'm so right. annoyed at is that we're having conversations about things that are so common in Cayman, mm. but because of where it's happening, we dismiss it or, no, or God, it. It, well, it should happen there because those people are just animals. Yeah, yeah, right? it's damn people. Correct. Do we have? The, nope. All right. To that caller, uh, when we come to you, you're not there. When we you're there, we're not coming. Uh, we'll make it work. Yeah. Uh, again, cooperation, collaboration, yeah, communication. Yeah, that's it. I mean, but, but, but I'm not. I recognize sometimes some people are with the best intentions, ill-informed, misguided, and maybe yeah. misstep. Uh, the, 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 the parliamentarian, Mr. Hugh, together with another, he sponsored a legislation that say that if crimes committed in, say, the Sabah Beach area attracted stiffer fines, penalties, that's and imprisonment. Dumb. I just why, why is that dumb, though? I just, I, I, like, why is it, so that same crime is a stiffer penalty, but the crime that happens downtown Georgetown is not, the crime that happens in my community is not. Hmm. Right, so they should get what less punishment for that. So some lives I, matter I, more than this I, one. I, 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 just I mean, Orwell said all men are created equal, but some are more equal than others. I, I just think it. They're making stuff up as they go along. I mean, I've heard uh, the whole tree strike law come back. It's not thoroughly researched. I mean, they, they have not. Have they not seen what they have done to jurisdictions like the U.S., yeah. where black and brown people was at the short end of that stick, where most of those people ended up in prison for long prison stints. Mm -hmm. Once politicians put that stuff in writing yeah. and it becomes law, who do they think is going to be held accountable for that? Us, the people. They're going to, they're, they're, we are going to get, we are going to be the ones that are going to be incarcerated more. But right? again, there's a cost, the, the financial cost, the, no, right? The accounting cost, the money that we're going to spend to build the prison, Agreed. to maintain it, to maintain the people, Agreed. then the loss to society because that person is in prison for something that could, once that, you know, penance has been paid, can be rehabilitated. Our bill, our yeah. our government bill is one billion dollars a year now. One billion. I can remember okay. when it was about five hundred million. I can remember the days where it was a million dollars. Like like you know, I can remember <laughs> that when I came up from Boston nine to five. It wasn't <laughs> high at all. Ten million I mean, was you know, plenty. Like, correct. I mean I like I could remember that. Now it's a billion dollars. Jeez. Let's look at what that's spent on. Yeah. Just let's look at the agencies that get most of that. Money. Can we talk about that? Maybe how yeah. that's just generally how that's allocated. All right, we got a news break. I think Susan has chocolate. Let's see if we get Since some. Since night, <laughs> stay tuned for talk today. Covering Ron Kaman, no Kaman, and right. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Radio Kaman in the Cayman Islands. www.radiokman.gov.ky Check out our social media pages Facebook, YouTube, X Formerly Twitter Radio Cayman Headline News The Department of Education Services or DES will be closed during the Easter holidays starting today at 3 p.m. Also tomorrow, Good Friday, March 29th, and Easter Monday, April 1st, normal operations will resume at 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday, April 2nd. Good afternoon once again. I'm Dion Anglin with your headlines and news elsewhere. Dozens of people are still missing following the attack on the Crocus City Hall music venue in Moscow, raising fears that the death toll could rise higher than the current 143. Some relatives of the missing have been attempting to track down their loved ones in hospitals around the capital. The fire, which destroyed much of the venue, is believed to have made many victims' remains unrecognizable. 143 people are still missing, Russian investigators said on Wednesday. And former President Jacob Zuma has been barred from running in South Africa's general election in May. The country's Electoral Commission, or IEC, has not given a reason. However, his 2021 conviction and jailing for contempt of court would appear to disqualify him. The 81-year-old served as president from 2009 until 2018 when he had to step down because of corruption allegations. That's a wrap of your headlines. I'm Dion Anglin. Radio More news available at www.radiokman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline News.
Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back and thanks for joining us. And for those callers who are trying to get through, hey, we're trying to answer. 949-837, 949-6990, WhatsApp call, 925-3261. Thanks to Mr. Michael Miles for sharing some time with us. Uh, it's, it's on the eve of Good Friday and, and I, uh, I recognize, you know, what tomorrow means and this weekend means for many of us. It's not just, you know, the festivities, it's the promise of salvation. Michael, we do have a caller on the WhatsApp. Hey, welcome. Thanks for calling. Hi, good afternoon. How are you guys? Excellent. How are you today? I'm giving thanks. Giving thanks. I am calling. I want to touch on a topic Mr. Michael Myers shared earlier. I had the privilege of working under his wing for some years when I was, I would say, early 20s. Uh-huh. And uh, I've learned a lot. One second. Yeah, yeah. And as this caller gets connected, yeah, okay. You there, caller? Okay. All right, whatever. You, uh, sometimes I see technology. I, I know, I know you're probably trying to switch from one device to the next and make it hands free, but <laughs> I still say two no, cans and a string. Now. Yeah, two <laughs> cans and a string work better. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for trying. Right. So I said that to say, oh, hello? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Michael Miles, you have taught, and not only me, um, the value the, the value of having, you said something earlier. And it's such a hard topic. It's a very uncomfortable topic, topic because it's these things start from home. And it's unfortunate some parents are not were not given the material to teach their children at a young age, um, the understanding and the, the mental intel, emotional and mental intelligence to deal with not being able to get what they want. Um, you have to work for what you want. You taught us that, Mr. Michael Blas. Well, I appreciate And that's that. a very, very important topic that we don't speak about. Anywhere you go in the world, you're going to have to work for what you want. Yep. Right? And we walk and we spread this thing about entitled Caymanian. Nowhere else in the world. Nowhere else in the world. And it's my very own people. Why are we spreading this all oh, entitled Caymanian, entitled? You have to work hard for it, just like everybody else. Yes, there is some injustice going on, and I understand. But you just you have to work hard. That's one topic. Another thing. Not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur. There needs to be a balance. Some people are going to be content with working for someone. Someone, some, some are going to be content. You know, they they, they want to own something. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a balance. And once you acknowledge that from an early stage, and you can, KFC started at what age? 50 something? It can happen. You can be working for somebody for 20 years and then bloops. You know, I want to have something for myself. Right. It's time for me to have something for myself. Again, these are conversations that need to be had. Within maybe a mentor, and Mr. Michael Maz, I had this with you. I, I guess this is where my fighting mentality came in because I was young. Oh, my parents going to make a way for me. Nope. Nope. We got to learn. We got to have the discipline to run a business. No one tells us that. Yeah, you can start a business today, but you have to have discipline to, to maintain it, to follow through, to be intentional. These are the things you taught us, and I'm sorry that this generation is coming up, and not all of them. If you're not around positive and wise people, you will never be exposed to this type of information. You will forever, you will forever be around, oh, you're entitled to, you're not entitled to nothing. Yeah. Nobody don't owe you anything. Yeah. I, 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 and this is why all of these, yeah, go Sorry, ahead. Yeah, no, thank you. I want to thank you for calling. I want to yeah. ask as well, though, and you are right, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kind of why some of us heard the comedian who said, you know, in his household, he doesn't give his child allowances. He says, I allow you to live here. I allow you to eat my food. I love you. So that entitlement, <laughs> do you think that somehow we have presented that in such a way that we have now misinterpreted, misapplied it? And if so, to what extent Caymanians in Cayman 
should have some level of greater access to something that they probably would not otherwise get in another man's land. If you see where I'm going, so that and I agree with you, there's very little you're entitled to, but at some yes. point, your country should be uh, a place where you have some level of favor, access, I agree. more so. So help me to, to appreciate that because I really like what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. And it's for what it's worth, yes. you know, another caller off air had said that Mr. Michael Myers was a great gentleman, and of all the things, he also taught him how to iron. So, <laughs> but, but help us to understand. <laughs> From little to big. <laughs> yep, there you go. Well, what you said, you, you are correct, and I'm, yeah. I understand. I born and raised here, and it's hard to me to even acquire a piece of land. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should. I'm not saying, you know, we should come first. Mm -hmm. I get it. This is our country. We should at least, because if you go to America, they are first picked when it's come on, when it come on to certain things. If they need a business loan, they'll pick them over me because I'm not an American. Every country will pick its own. Right. Right. So I understand definitely. Yeah. But having this sense of entitlement for you are entitled to live. You're entitled to free education. Yeah. You're entitled to health. You know what I mean? Those yeah, right, basic yeah. things. But anything out of that, you're going to have to work hard for it. No, I, I And agree that's the you. mentality we need to yeah. put in these young, young children from a young age before they leave the household because they're going to find it hard. And this is where depression sticks in because you have social media at the side saying, hey, this is what life should look like. How yeah. do you find no. social media? I mean, because I absolutely just abhor that thing. I think that's one of the... It's disgusting to me, but how do you find it? Because maybe I'm just old and um, I like my chocolate too no, much. No, don't say that. <laughs> so, so, so social media, because it, it presents an image where everybody is getting along and their hair is always done and there are no problems and, you know, life is dandy. And to me, that's, you know, that's just a, a false. But anyway, what, how do you find social media, given that you said the impact there is kind I, of, yeah. It can be positive and it can be negative. Okay. Again, being knowledgeable about the internet. Mm -hmm. You have to know that we live in a time and age where I don't know if you see that video circulating with um <laughs> President Trump Pre Obama President, and President. Yeah, <laughs> saying all of these things that it was not him. You have to be knowledgeable and yeah. again, being around persons who are wise and understand things. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, my father taught me this. If you see five dummies sit down somewhere and you go around them five dummies, you're going to be the sixth one. You have to wrap yourself <laughs> around people who are right. wise. It's no joke. Right. You are right. No, you you, are could, right. you, you are could be right. mentally strong. Yeah. And again, emotional intelligence is so... In, I can go on and on, yeah, sir. When is, I heard yeah, Mr. Michael Myers yeah. on the radio, I was like, this is somebody who inspired me. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Because a woman is known by the company she keeps, right? Um, right. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm his... Call it say it's past student. Um, <laughs> I don't see him smile often, but I can see I'm proud. Yeah. It starts from home. All That's right. all I can say. It starts from home. All right. Well, much we would ask, but thank you for sharing. Have a wonderful Easter, all right? Thank you. Appreciate Same it. Same to you there. And you Thanks. have a good one, Mr. Michael. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate Michael, that, that is thing. I, I want to ask more, but we have another caller coming in okay. at 10 past 2. Let's go to the phones. Welcome. It's you. Thanks for calling. Hello. Good afternoon, Dwayne. I hear we mentioned you earlier, man. Glad that you were able to find time to call. How's it going? Okay. All right. Thanks for listening, listening man. Listening, man. Um, yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Myers. So. Good evening. Good, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, speaking about in Caymanians entitled to things, Caymanians are, Caymanians are entitled to the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of concessions that the government continues to give way to rich people that we're able to build a trade school in every district. That way our young men are able to ride their bicycles and go to the trade schools and then go home for lunch and come back to the, to the trade school. Mm -hmm. But in, in, instead of them having those types of things in place for the young men, those young men, especially those that are very talented with their hands, they're finding time to, to be in, in the wrong place, around the wrong people and doing the wrong things. And government is not providing anything for them, for, for, for them in order to, to avoid these types of things. Mm -hmm. And then, 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 we have, then we have the government hiring foreign police who take in and lock up our little young boys, the ones that want to be police or the, or, or the ones that want to be somebody in life. 
And the government just continues to, to, to ignore the truth or act like they're not going to sin. But yet they act like they're the most educated people in the world. And it's very simple. You collect the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of concessions, you build the trade schools, and then you're going to keep our young boys, young men out of trouble. It's simple as that. Why they don't want to do that? You know why they don't want to do that? Because the big construction companies want to continue hiring people, foreign labor, and doing what they please with them because they can't do it to Caymanians. And then they don't want to see our young Caymanians starting and starting their own construction business. That's why they're doing all this. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. And uh, with that, we are going to take a quick break and then come back to continue our calls. So stay tuned. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and Join the party. Digicel. Better connected. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I go in flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without a hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have bar. Barbados, going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. The best foundation you can wear is glowing, healthy skin. The offices of dermatologist Dr. Wayne Porter specialize in enhancing your skin's well-being. Whether you're seeking advanced skin care, including any skin cancers, Botox, filler, cosmetic skin enhancements, or simply looking to reduce wrinkles, Dr. Porter offers a full-service dermatology and dermatological surgery practice. For more information, email drporterkman at gmail.com or call 946-9020. That is 946-9020. Has the circus come to town? No, it's A.L. Thompson's two-week blowout sale. From March 15 through March 30, get under the huge tent outside A.L. Thompson's to save big. Save up to 75% on lighting, electrical, plumbing, paint, and hardware. Save up to 75% on housewares, building materials, and the ever-popular scratch and dent appliances. Take advantage of the savings while they last. It's March blowout under the tent at A.L. Thompson's Georgetown. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back and thanks for joining us. And uh, what, 14 minutes thereabouts? Thanks to Michael Myers for the conversation. No calls. I want to ask uh, as we continue, but first, did you want to share anything before I shared what this, uh, one of our listeners writes? No, please go ahead. Okay. So, our listeners asking, you know, to what extent? And your trade school, your training, inspired Cayman training. To what extent, you know, are young Caymanians, and particularly young Caymanian boys, you know, accessing your services, knocking on your doors, as it were? 
we've doubled in size, I would say, every year. We've literally doubled in size. We have, you know, we've gone, we are going from probably about 2,000 square foot of space now to uh, about 5,000 square foot of space. That's what our need is now. We are now hunting space down because we we have so many people wanting to access courses that we don't have enough space yeah. at the training center. We have six training rooms, two very large, two larger training rooms, and 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 um, sort of I would say it's even two and a half smaller training mm-hmm. rooms, and we can't hold any more people, mm-hmm. right? So we have to have more space. We have twelve thousand programs. We have a lot of online training programs. I've been we've invested in a lot of online because there's a lot of folks who can't actually come to us on a full time basis but still want training. Yeah. So we've been able to, you know, make several investments to make sure that we can get courses at reasonable amounts that are quality and goes towards people's uh goes towards our people's uh, right. qualifications. We have a WhatsApp call and as we answer that, this person says really enjoying the conversation with Mr. Myers. I really hope that our government will uh, really put managing money and life choices slash skills classes for all ages in our schools. I agree. All right. Can we take this call? You're welcome. Thank you for calling. And I've been heavily invested in this conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Had. Hi. Thank you Hello? very much. Yes, Hi. yes. Thank you very much for being so heavily Hi. invested. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miles, and I'm pretty yeah. sure you've already tried to I guess, approach Ministry of Education. We have a lot of young boys and girls mm-hmm. who are in year nine who don't know what or even have a clue which, which industry, what they want to do, but they're more so hands-on. Having a trade is very important, and what you're doing is amazing. However, if I feel if you are within the school at that age, because when you're leaving high school with just a high school diploma, you need to look for a job, you need experience, you need some sort of certification. Why are they not approaching you and saying, hey, be a part of the year 11 program? Why would they want to prove me right, Be a part right, of the year 12 program. <laughs> you know, why would they want to prove me right? You know, I it, It's not short of conversations. I have met with everybody, and I have met with senior leaders at... Um, uh, John Gray. I've met with senior leaders at Clifton Hunter. I've met with senior leaders at SIFEC. I've met with senior leaders at the Department of Education. I've met with senior leaders at the Ministry of Education. I've rolled this out to everyone. I have said this can be done. It has to be done. We now have to start off from young people in as young as year seven. We can provide the program in. We have the qualified program in it. By the time a uh, um, a student comes out of either one of those schools, they'd be a, either a qualified plumber, qualified electrician, qualified um, technician. We can, as a country, we can do this. You know how many calls I've gotten back from that? Zero. I agree. So I, you know we what? can actually do you know this. What? They're not, they're not, you know, like I, um, as I was telling doing today, there's not anyone who champions that. And until there's a champion that come forward to say, we are going to change this, it doesn't matter what the schools want. What you're going to continue to deliver is the same education that you've always delivered that is not going to be competitive in the market of today. Who's going to have to make that change? And again, a very hard conversation to have parents. You're going to have to put them put that very same foot. They use to carry, carry their kids to school or walk them to the bus stop. They're going to have to put their foot down and talk because... They're going to be the same ones complaining to the kids. Don't have nothing to do. They leave high school. They don't have no qualifications. Yes, we understand core subjects, math, science, English. You need those three. Correct. Correct. But if your child is approaching your 10 and don't have at least five areas they're interested in, we need to introduce a trade. Because you never know what can happen. These are the the things. You have seen it. These are the, the... the type of careers that we are promoting today, the trades are dominating those. I can show you the stats. The the uh, Department of Work provides monthly stats on all of the trades, on well, on every job. And you know the number one job in Cayman today is a carpenter, a finished carpenter. You know how many of them we are producing? Zero. We're not producing any. Why? The investment isn't there. The, that sort of want 
we want to do it isn't there. And that's the part that I think that's killing our country is that we have people that are doing a lot of activity. We don't have a lot of people that's doing a lot of outcome, right? And this is why I like 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 I've said this across the spectrum when I worked in government, when I worked outside of government. We have to have people who want to go beyond the conversation. And right now, we only have people who want to sit around the table. We want to uh, pay millions of dollars for consultation reports that they're never going to do. So what they're doing is that they're buying a lot of time saying, well, you know, let's just bring in a consultant and let's just publish another consultant report. And the consultant is going to come and talk to people like me, you, and a number of other folks. They're going to put it in their nice report. They're going to get paid handsomely. And then they're going to give it back to our government. And the government's going to say, ah, that's too expensive. We're not going to do that right now. Like that have happened decades. That have happened for decades. When I when when I've said this could be done, we don't need another consultant to come in and tell us that. We have a more than enough intelligent people within our government. We also have a lot of intelligent people outside of our government that working in the private sector. What we do not have is a champion or are several champions at every level of education that comes forward and says. This we we're done with talking. This is going to happen today, not next week, not next year. Today, and I'm going to clear away all of the clutter that people are going to bring to to try to defeat it. What we've succumbed to is politicians want to get reelected, so they're going to give parents what is popular, and that's what's popular. We're providing programs that what's popular. We're not providing programs of what of of how people are going to get paid. The average youngster that come into my center. They want to be a plumber. They want to, you know, they want to be a heavy equipment operator, right? That's what we're producing. I'm not providing, pro I have 12,000 programs. The majority of the programs that we are providing are the programs that when I look at Department of Works list of, of the most jobs in demand, that's how we are preparing people. And while I have all of these programs, the majority of them I don't use. If one-off situations come, I have those programs. But the majority of the things of what we're purchasing right now falls within that list of what work produces because that's what's in demand. I want to make sure that our people can thrive. What we're talking about in Cayman every single day is surviving. How do we survive the next CUC bill? How do we survive the next Foster's bill? How do we survive the next gas bill? We are we're like That's what we are always saying to a lot of our people how do we give a person a gas card or you know uh, um, a CUC uh, a gift card this is what politicians are saying to us right we're not talking about how do we produce more engineers how do we produce more owners how do we produce more um, water sports operators that are owning their business or our CEOs of their business or CEO of the hotels we're not talking that that sort of discussion and therefore your year nines they're not hearing that. They're not hearing that they could be the CEO of the Westin or the Marriott. They're hearing that they can simply just be a bartender. And yep. that it's, it's so much more to tourism than that. But it that's is. all that it they're is. hearing. Yeah. Right? That's it? Really? Like, that's all we're painting? When we know that the top positions are making, you know, $200,000 a year and all we want them to do is get paid minimum wage? We need to have bigger conversations. So, therefore, you're right. The hope is lost because these kids don't see that they can actually come out and own the damn hotel or own, Pop. you know, like own the parking lot of 100 cars that's being parked in that mm -hmm. area. We don't talk about that anymore. We're just talking about these nope. youngsters getting a job. And as long as, it's that, as long as we're just talking jobs, they're never going to get there because they don't have the qualifications when they come out of high school. Yeah. Caller? Another big point. Another big point. This is the last one because I know you got to get more callers, but <laughs> we have to destroy the stigma attached to parents setting these unrealistic plans and ideas for their children that, oh, trade is nothing. Trade is everything. Uh -huh. Based on how the world is running, we need to stop this. Oh, lawyer, doctor, banker. No, ma'am. Uh, and I'm not saying if, if your child is leading that way, great. But th we need to remove the stigma attached I don't think it's this. I don't think it's a stigma anymore. Here's what I think it is. I think it's denial. Everybody needs it. a plumber and air on most plumbers they're being that paid eighty it. to ninety dollars an hour. Everybody needs an electrician. Everyone we all take our cars to a technician and we hate to see the bill. 
So at the end of the day, when I hear parents talk about, well, those people don't get paid a lot, really? When was the last time that you paid a contractor less than $500,000 a year to put up a house, right? Are these people idiots? They're not. They're owners of their own companies and the average house today is costing about two to $300 a square foot. So in the end, we're in denial about it. I, I don't think it's a stigma anymore. We've gone beyond that. What we are now doing is denying that these, that, that these particular careers are now viable for our children. And we are still into this. Well, they should be like I have youngsters coming in saying that they want to be in administration. When you ask them what that means, they have no clue what that means because someone have sat down and said to them, they shouldn't work in the hot sun. And these are youngsters that could actually be a boat owner or um, a technician that is at a very high level. But we have limited them to sitting on and answering the phone yeah. because some parent have said to them, well, that's all I I've had to work hard. So I don't want you to work in a hot sun. So you should just go and work for government in and, and, and just answer the phone. Yeah. That's but, it but it's Michael, to be a receptionist. <laughs> what if right? What if it's not only denial? We're being duped. So as the parent is sharing that, what if the education system was saying to our children that these jobs all right, not only is there as the call is shared, that there's jobs now somehow being presented as less than, we're now displacing their children, denying them the opportunities, duping them into thinking it's not viable economically, financially, in order to. Can I say shame on us, Dwayne? I mean, at the end of the day, mm. is it there? Yes, I have heard it. I have heard it from teachers. I have heard it from uh, uh, um, uh, career counselors. I have heard it from upper echelon of um, yeah. uh, school personnel. Is it there? Absolutely. My discussion has always been, how do we ensure that young people understand that there are a vast amount of careers? Because in construction, you still need finance, human resources. Uh, you, you still need supervisors, managers, leaders, CEOs. You have all of that in construction. In hospitality, we don't just have bartenders and housekeepers. We have layers of leadership that leads all the way up to the top. Right. Right. But why are we only painting those jobs? Why? Because we are saying to our people, you're not really good enough to be that. So therefore, I'm only going to offer you this. Whereas if yep. you want to change that, it's not just a parental thing. It has to be a country thing. Societal. Right. right? It has to now be deep seated in our culture that we no longer have our people accept yeah. i understand limitations i deal with it every day from a lot of young people that come in the doors i'm not saying that everyone's going to be you know the owner of the company but i damn sure it's going to paint that it's possible that's right cool. i want to paint that that's possible yeah. for them Let, let's take the caller's last uh, points you oh, still there sorry mr mr michael miles um I'm, I'm willing to work with you to get to our youth wow thank you so whenever you guys are sitting down and having this conversation how can we get in touch with you? I, I, I will. Um, you want to give uh, Miss Susan your number, then she can pass it to us. Definitely, okay. I can do yeah, that. Yeah, respectfully, do that to us, and then am I hearing that you're willing to come back on, sit across the table with Michael and myself, have this conversation? Off air, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's a start. Yeah, because you, he said That's it earlier. Start. When you speak, they, they say yeah. you know you're a troublemaker. I'm not troublemaker. I, I'm, no child get left behind. And I that hear you. My bottom I hear line. You. I hear you. Please yeah. give her your number. I will take it with your consent. Michael would also, and we will reach out to you. How about that? Will do. Will oh, do. Hey, that is one. My challenge are there 10,000 more. Yeah. Okay. Because there's 100,000 of us. If we can tie 10%, if we can save 10%, there has to be ten percent of us, so I, we look for ten percent. I agree with you. All I, right, listen, man, we don't need to sell everyone on this. Mm. Like I said, <laughs> you, I, I need two or three people within the civil yeah. service that can say that are in positions of power that can say this is going to happen. Right. All right. Over these three weekends, as we talk amongst our friends and family, as we enjoy the festivities, the fellowship, and as we reflect on what you know uh, our faith has brought us to this point of salvation, maybe like that caller who's offered herself. Sure. Here I am. Use me. Either to you, Mr. Miles, or to me directly. Let's invite others to step Indeed. up. Let me uh, share this and ask you for your sure. points. This caller says that um, we have seemingly very little value in our own people, and uh, although we have some of the best consultants, our own people, we seem to ignore them. And one of the most underutilized resources on our island 
is the people, especially the retired civil servants. I, I absolutely agree with you. Like, right. like I said, there are layers and layers of this, and certainly I'm not here to drill down into that, and I'm not here to have long conversations no, anymore, exactly. right? You know, doing. I mean, I've told you yeah, before. Man. I've been in too many meetings where we have long conversations, and we're losing young people, whether it's the you know, prison or police or, or, or death or, or, or physical limitations. Because all I hear every time I sit down with from police officers to, to teachers to, you know, uh, personnel within the government is they are all giving me reasons why we can't. And I rarely sit in a conversation and everyone's around the table just to say, listen, man, we're doing this. Right. We can do this because we have the expertise here. We have the money and nothing stops us. What mm -hmm. I hear are is all of the reasons why we can't. And mm -hmm. then we need to then throw a consultant in to bring us a report to tell us why, why we can't or why we should. And then when we get that report to prove that we can, then we spend another four years fighting that report or saying that the report wasn't what we expected. And then we don't put in anything. And then the next cohort of, of, of government officials come in and uh, provide just another consultation report. So I am no longer in the arena of sitting down and having long conversations with people who are actually not sold on success. Because for me, the glass will always be full. It's not even half full for me anymore. The glass is always full. Because in order for us to paint hope for young people, the glass must be full. For them to be sold on something, we need to paint the glass as being full. Because if it's not full, why am I in this business? Yeah, it's sure not to get wealthy, <laughs> right? <laughs> like that's not that, that, like that's not why I'm doing this. Because if it was that, I wouldn't be on your talk show. Yeah. I would just simply be there counting my money. Yeah. My issue is, is that we're always saying, it, well, it can't be done. I speak to the police. I say to them all the time, it can be done. These are things that can be done. I've said, send me. I help them understand. I said, send me any child that you potentially have some concerns about on the street. I helped them develop the referral document. I said, have your community officers fill this out. If you're concerned that a child, 17, 18 years old, obviously not working, banging about on the street, you, you're concerned about that child, fill out the document, take a picture of it, text it to me. I will follow up with that child and their parent and get them in and I'll give them a full scholarship. You know how many I've received in the last two years? Zero. Yet they're telling me it can't be done. And yet I have young people, 17, 18 years old, that have come through our program that are referring their brothers, their sisters, their cousins, all to us. And yet I, yet, yet the police is telling me that, that it cannot be done. Michael, I'm hearing you issue an invitation to our public. I'm recognizing that in our society, as you have said, right, and inspired us, now we're encouraged, motivated, so we must act. Talk is cheap. Proof is in the pudding, they Absolutely, say. Man. Time to act, right? Absolutely. I mean, people so, need to start <coughs> getting in meetings yeah. in defending their point and then asking for more money to do more outputs. Yeah. Right? If we're not in this to actually serve the public and our people, then why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't want a paycheck that bad. Well, you know what's interesting? Right? We talk about life skills as, as we close out. Some of the greatest life skills as you have shared in, indirectly knowing how to help yourself, change your tire, balance your checkbook whenever we had checkbooks, but you know, certainly personal finance as you yep. teach. Being able to you know, look at some of the household things like plumbing and electrical, little things that are significant. Not that a person may necessarily venture into that field, right. but at least have a working knowledge or a decreased Great. fear, and yet we don't do that. I, agree. Uh, I don't want, as I said, <clears throat> I don't want to read what one of our listeners shared, but with the listeners' consent, I'll paraphrase one little bit. It said that in our society today, we're failing all of our people. We're failing the child who has a legitimate you know, learning challenge. Yep. We're failing the child that is seemingly has the propensity to learn and is excelling mm -hmm. because we're not deploying resources. In closing, is that an indictment is that an accurate statement absolutely man. I, I i believe that what we have done is that we are saying we have a billion dollars to spend as long as we're spending it the public should be sold that we're spending it on them but the public isn't really feeling a lot of that in particular the folks who are vulnerable oh. and are feeling that they're not included 
right? Yeah. Those are the folks that I think that we are forgetting, and those are the people that are causing us the most pain in our country. Like I've told you, yeah. it's not tens of thousands, right? You're talking about a handful, right? Which no. is, you know, a couple of hundred. But they're going to have children. And what is going to happen is that we are going to have generations upon generations of young people who are going to feel an that exponential they have been consequence. About, yeah. Right? And then they're going to take matters in their own hands. Yeah. The goal for us right now is to have them included back, to sell them on the Cayman dream that we are going to be here to support them and and, and, and have them move forward. Yeah. Michael, thank you very much. And if it's not improper to ask, if you get any negative you know, pushback from this conversation, do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just like this conversation isn't going to make it go away, right? I was going to say you're a big body, broad shoulders. Absolutely, I mean, uh, just hit the that, gym. Uh, that's every day. But you have now inspired me to once again have another look at the latest report from noted Caribbean economist Ms. Marla Dukaran. Mm -hmm. She was our guest last Friday. Yeah. And uh, I read the report in preparation for it. I read it from the perspective of interviewing. I want to reread it again because she made some very, very uh, insightful. Uh, points yeah. drawn from data. She talked about you know, how many of our children in schools, you know, making them the mark from primary to high school. She mm -hmm. talked about the impact of development, and construction, and mm -hmm. conflating the two. She talked about you know the tourism sector, and I think sometimes we hear things and we don't hear them mm -hmm. <coughs> said in a way that sure. doesn't raise you know. Sure. Or we don't like the person. We shoot the messenger. Yeah. All right, Michael. Thank you. Thanks to Susan. She gave us eight minutes over. No, it's she didn't give it. We took it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, no, Ms. Susan. And to everybody, have a wonderful, safe, and blessed weekend. It, it isn't that I'm speaking from a religious perspective, but from a spiritual one. Not talking religion, but relationship. Yeah. Uh, love, honor, respect, and value each other. Right, yeah. Mr. Wells? Absolutely. And I wish the, uh, I wish our people, my family, have a yeah. safe and wonderful Christmas, everyone. Easter. Please be careful. Oh, sorry, I mean um, <laughs> Easter. Sorry. Uh, I feel um, the same way. Yes, yes. Christmas. Have a safe... <laughs> Easter, please be careful out there, in particular those that are on boats and yes. on the water. Please be careful out there. All right. Thank you for saying that. And as Mr. Art says, we are our brother's keeper. And if you're on the roads, be safe. Please, I beg you. I I don't know. Please, please enjoy it, but be safe, yep. sensible, respectful. And there's a word I want to use in relation to the way we behave. So don't let me have to use that word and choose them when we return because we have had an activity over the weekend that has been yeah. just fun, family, yeah. you know, fellowship, filled with a lots of food yeah. and laughter, and nothing transpires that is negative. That's my prayer. Yeah, that's it. All right. There's a song I heard earlier, but I won't request it now, but boy, well, it was a good song that was played. Um, Leonard Richie. Yeah. Uh, Susan, we could go back to it, man. It has a religious connotation, but it's so soulful. All right. God's willing. Join us on Monday, Tuesday. Talk Today is brought to you by Subway. Open 24 hours in Countryside, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers in West Bay. And by the Ministry of District Administration. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. And Cayman Airways. Call them on 949-2311 to book your nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados. And Digicel, Cayman's bigger, better network. And Doctor's Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctor's Hospital. Always there for you. Call 949-6066.